Oh, hello, oh. everybody. Welcome to the, um, you know, Make Code Arcade stream. I'm Richard. Uh, I'm Joe at J1. I'm Shannon at Chacal on the forums. And I'm Vivian at Lift Group on the Make Code forums. Joey is immune to my machinations. <laughs> um, cool, we're doing a Make Code help desk today. Um, so we're going to be answering your questions. You, specifically. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. Not them. You. Yeah. Um, Trevor. <laughs> and if you have questions that you want to be answered, um, you can post. We'll post something in the forum. You can go to like that link and then be like, answer my question. And we'll answer it next stream if we don't have time today or today if we do. So let's start off with... Um, uh, a classic one from Jacob C. And the question is, what consoles do you currently own? What consoles have you owned in the past? And are you playing any old games still? So this one's going to take up the whole hour between Richard and I, I think. I think so. <laughs> um, All right, I'm going to list them as quickly as I can, okay? Let's see. I have um, a PS4 um, Pro. I have a um, NES, a Super Nintendo... Um, a, a Sega Game Gear, a Wii U, a Wii, a PlayStation 2, um, a Nintendo 3DS, a Nintendo 2DS XL, um, uh, all of the versions of Game Boy Advance. So, like, normal Game Boy Advance, the SP, the, um, uh, and the Game Boy Advance Micro. I have the, uh, let's see, um, uh, Sony PSP and the PSP, and the PS Vita. Um, I have two Nintendo Switches, a regular Switch and a Switch Lite. Um, Wait, why well, you and, have two? Well, I wanted the Switch Lite one because it's more portable, but I still have my old one. Ah, I see, I see. Yeah. Um, see, I know I'm forgetting stuff. Um, what about the I thing you got, got from your sister? Did you count that one already? Sega Game Gear? Oh, okay. I, I said that one. Um, <laughs> blinked out. Yeah, that's reasonable. And I have a DSi. Um, uh, the the console the single console that I have the most of is a Game Boy Advance because I've got like eight Game Boy Advances I don't know how I got all of them but they're just like all over my apartment um and I think that's it PS2. is there an old game that you're playing like currently this week the old game that I'm playing this week um I'm playing um two old games right now one is Ikaruga which is a um a, a not super old but um it's like a, a bullet, you know, shooter space game. It's really fun. Um, and then the other um, old game that I'm playing, um, which I've been playing for a while, I need to go back and finish, is a uh, Valkyrie Profile for the PS One. It's a good game. Nice, nice, nice. Joey. Um, got a PS Five, PS Four Pro, PS Four, which are at separate places, so I guess it's okay. Uh, PS Two. Uh, that's my PlayStation's up. Uh, PlayStation Classic, that one's cute. I like that one. Um, Xbox Series X, Xbox One S, I think. I don't use that one as much because it's older. Um, Switch, uh, like five DSs, like three um, Game Boys of various types. Um, Game Gear, uh, uh, I got other stuff, but I can't think of it right away. Got oh, my Game Boy Color. I forgot my Game Boy Color. <laughs> forgot that one, too. Um... Not playing that much old games right away, no. Cyberpunk and Monster Sanctuary. What's your favorite playing. old game, Joey? Ooh, ooh, ooh. A favorite. <laughs> this is still hard. Uh, Sunshine is good. Mario Sunshine is good. Shannon? Um, my parents did not believe in video games, so... The first console I've ever owned is the Nintendo Switch, which I got last year, um, like in the fall or something. Um, but yeah, PC games all the way. Um, and an old game that I enjoy a lot is Roller Coaster Tycoon. Oh, yeah, wow. don't don't let this fool you. Shannon plays a ton of video games. <laughs> just I play a lot of um, weird short indie games that are only available on PC. That flavor of thing. And I'm the same as Shannon. I 
never really owned a console. But when I got hired to Microsoft, the first thing I bought was a Nintendo Switch. <laughs> and I basically just played Breath of the Wild on it. But uh, recently I've been watching somebody play through Pokemon Fire Red. I really want to play Pokemon Fire But what, how do I play? I feel like I own like one of the, my cousins used to like secretly give us like um, consoles. So I think we must have gotten one from them. And then that's how I play Pokemon. So now I don't really want to play Pokemon. If you need a Game Boy Advance, I'll, I'll, I'll hook you up. Okay, cool, cool, cool. As I, I said, like, I have so many of them. Okay, we'll, we'll um, talk later. They're all so good. It's got a trench coat, and if he opens the inside, it's just rows of Game Boy Advances and all the colors. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, um, yeah, no, no, but uh, Fire Red Leaf game are the best Pokemon games, so good choice. I, I still mm-hmm. like Ruby Sapphire, but that's because it was the first one that I was able to read. <laughs> Yeah, I think my copy of Pokemon is kind of sketchy or something. Because, like, mm-hmm. I remember I got to the point where there was, like, a big boat. And afterwards, it all got wiped out. And I could never finish the game because it's too sad. Yeah. When I was not- playing Crystal the first time, it was basically me playing as a nutslock. Because I didn't know how to heal or do anything or even how to press buttons. So that was good. Yeah, no, um, my first, the first Pokemon game I ever got was Silver for the Game Boy Color. Um and I did not know how to save. And I was like, oh, this is a fun game, but it must take forever to finish it. I would have been like that Pokemon is the best Pokemon. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Ready for the next question? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, we have we have been um, hinting at the fact that there's a release coming. And Unsigned Arduino asks, when is the next release coming? Several weeks? Months? They're just wondering. Um, um, soon. <laughs> yes. Soon. No and promises, then but soon. We also had somebody ask, will they have to download the next release or will it automatically update for the browser version? Magic. It will automatically update. So um, whenever we push a release, you should get it automatically. Your page will refresh and you'll have all of the new stuff. So don't yes. worry about it. Yes. Oh, and we have like specific feature questions. Um, when will we add flipping and rotating into the official image editor? Because we do have an extension right now that can do it. It's true. Um, yeah, I'm um, um, I'm working on that right now. I'm hoping it will be in the next release, but um, we have a lot of other stuff to do. Um, that being said, I was literally writing the code for it before the stream. Um, so hopefully it should be soon. Soon. Yeah. Um, Mr. HM asks, is there an official channel to make enhancement requests? GitHub. GitHub. Mm. Yeah. Or the form to... Uh, if there's something there, we usually copy it over to GitHub. Um, yeah, so um, if you go to... Uh, um, uh, GitHub.com uh, slash Microsoft... Dash. Oh, yeah, sorry, PXD Arcade. Oops. <laughs> um, GitHub.com slash Microsoft slash PXD Arcade slash issues, um, you can file your issue there. Um, just kind of explain what you want, and this is also for enhancements. And um, we'll take a look at it and, you know, label it and, yeah, maybe have some discussion about it. But this is the official place to do it. This is by far the best way. There's a lot more people that will see it if you put it here versus on the forum. Um, And, like, like if you file an issue here, you guarantee someone will look at it and, like, you know, evaluate um, your your feature request or your bug or whatever. Um, So, also, we appreciate it when people file issues here. So. Oh yes, absolutely. And um, if you do <laughs> file it, if you do post it on the forum, most likely you'll just get one of us asking you to open an issue for it. So save yourself a step. Mm. And you know, feel like super cool putting things in the GitHub. <laughs> mm-hmm. mm. Okay, um, Mr. HM also asks or says they started using Arcade during remote and considered remote learning and considered continued use when they return, but would. Also, we'd really like to know more about the direction of and future release goals before committing. Can we talk about, it's in beta, right? So we can talk about things that are coming. Oh yeah, sure. Um, I can give a little sneak preview of what's in beta. Um, So I should warn everybody, don't use beta. Um, We're still fixing a lot of things in it and it can kind of, you know, get you into some some trouble if you um, uh, start Mm -hmm. using it. But let's take a look at a sneak preview of the things that are coming um, up in the next release. Um, so I'm going to go to rkmateco.com slash beta. Again, don't go here. Um, um, you're, you're, you're fine to come here and try things out, but you shouldn't open any projects 
um, that you've already created, and you shouldn't tr create anything that you expect to, um, you know, keep going. Um, yeah. So, so um, we short reason why for that is that we try and keep compatibility between releases. But if you go to beta, there might be something that we change, and we don't keep, we don't think about things that are breaking between beta changes. So if you like make a chain uh, game now, and we switch beta to the live site we will make sure that works. But we can't do that for every single beta increment. Cool. So the um, big exciting thing we have coming is the new asset editor. So you can see that our toggle has gotten a little bit bigger. And now you can go over here, and you've got a place to create um, um, all of the different assets you can have in your program. So animations, tile maps, tiles, images. You can still do it the same old way, but this is a nice way to um, just kind of you know do things real quick. Um, and you know, make your assets kind of separately of your um, uh, your your code. Um, so this toggle also has a new um, section, which is my assets, and the gallery has also changed a little bit. And I'll get into that in a second. Um, so you can name your asset down here. I'm going to call this one Gerald. Um, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and just give them a face. And um, this is Gerald. Um, so if you open up the gallery, you can see um, we've got uh, the same kind of layout as before, but we've also got some other new stuff. So one re re feature request we've had a lot is being able to open tiles in the image editor, and they're here now. You can go ahead and grab your tiles and edit them, um, which is great. And not only are they here, they're also in the tile map editor. I'll show that off in a second. Um, but let's go ahead and go back to the editor and click done, and we're going to create another image. So now if I click this My Assets tab, you can see, oh, Gerald's there. Um, and I can open up Gerald and you know reference it in, in more than one place. Um, any changes I make here, any block that is using this Gerald asset will also have those changes. So it's kind of a way to you know, separate things and use the same image in multiple places without having to edit it you know, a bunch of times whenever you want to change things. Um, uh, another neat thing is the gallery is now much better for um, different types of assets. So let me go ahead and go into um, animation. Um, so before our gallery just showed single frames, but now we have um, full animations for you guys to check out, including all of the animations that are built in. Um, and they're all flipped um, to all the different directions. So if you mouse over, you can see the previews. Um, and yeah, if you click on one of these, it just fills up the entire um, editor with you know, this stuff. So that's pretty neat. Um, Anything else you guys can think of off the top of your head? Uh, tile, the tile has galleries now, I guess. Oh yeah, right. So if you go into the tile map editor, um, you can go into my tiles and create a new tile. And now you can finally go to the gallery and you can choose a tile to edit. So there you go. I'm opening this tile and ruining it. Let's see. Um, and I guess that this lets you go between different tile maps that uh, maybe have gotten lost or something. If you made a tile map and then you deleted the, or I don't remember exactly how the life cycle for that, but if you delete the block, I think it will still persist in here. Yeah, it will. Yeah. Um, so anything that has a name will show up. So um, you can see here's that tile map I was just making. Um, we have these little icons to say what type of asset it is. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's the new asset editor. Um, and there's a bunch of other kind of little changes that you'll see. Um, a lot of bug fixes and other things that are going into this. Um, the other thing you should know is you don't need to um, upgrade your projects. They should all still work in this new editor. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we're still working out some bugs, but yeah. Oh, um, one other thing that's relevant to this stream. Um, get random value from list. It exists. It's real. Joey coded it. Yeah. Um, so um, you can finally use this in your program. Another one that's pretty small, and so pro people probably won't notice it, but in the sp in the drop down for flags, there's two new flags, I believe. I think I merged that a while ago. Um, so you can separate out like don't touch walls and don't touch sprites. So this is like if those two combined is the same as ghost, basically. Yeah. Um, so that's right. if you want to make it so you like. Still hit walls. That's important. Yeah. So um, just a real quick disclaimer. We're not guaranteeing that all of this stuff will show up in the next release. This is what it, the state is right now. And like I said, we still have a lot of bugs to fix and things to work on. Um, mm -hmm. So some of this might change. 
but you know, there's a little sneak preview for you. And we're planning on using beta next week during the stream. So hopefully we'll get to, um, you know, show off some stuff and how it actually gets used in programs that we write. Um, anyway, I'm going to go back to the normal editor. Um, also, Mr. HM also asks, uh, or says that the Game Maker Guide is a very nice addition. So if people haven't seen that before, you know, you can check that out. And they're also wondering about an update to documentation. It is pretty light, not much depth, and it's not written for students in their opinion. Uh, is this reference documentation, it sounds like? Like yeah. the help, uh, could you right click and show a help menu just so we can have? Yeah, so um, what they're referring to is we have this kind of help documentation for blocks. If you right click on them and click help, you get this little side panel here, which um, will give you some information about that block and how to use it. Um, eventually. Eventually. Maybe do the variable one. And do forever. It is quite slow on first load also. Um, so it is loading the whole doc so much. Uh, huh, this looks well, broken. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. Well, I mean, I did it on live like earlier today, so. <laughs> Could be just because I'm streaming my screen. Yeah. Everything slowed down quite a bit. All right, well, anyway, you should right click help and get some information about the, the block that you're um, uh, uh, looking at. If you have any specific um, suggestions, please totally go to this um, github.com slash Microsoft, you know, PXD Arcade issues. Um, we try to make these things as understandable as possible, but, you know, if you have things that, you know, you're calling out or that you think could be organized in a better way, um, please drop us a line over here. And um, this is, again, the place where you're most likely to get a response. Mm -hmm. um, does anyone else have anything to say about that? Uh, oh, wait, we're, so do we answer the question? <laughs> so I guess like, yes, in general, it just uh, it just takes time to write good documentation. So that's part of why it's not there. Uh, we have a ton of blocks, and so that's not an excuse. Like, we should have better documentation. But if you find one that's lacking, uh, it's very helpful to point it out, because then it just solves half the time of finding the things that are bad. Yeah, and we've been brainstorming like, um, I don't know, different forms that like documentation or like, you know, tips and tricks or whatever could take for Arcade. Um, so like smaller tutorials, uh, a tutorial in the form of like a side doc. Um, so we are like thinking hard about how to improve our, you know, student onboarding experience. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, would love to hear from, you know, teachers or people using Arcade. Yeah. Okay. Um... A kind of fun question for everybody coming up from Unsigned Arduino. Do any of us play any instruments? Uh, should we go Richard or Shannon, Joey, Richard, me? That's the way it's on my screen. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have in the past uh, taken lessons in piano, flute, trumpet, and French horn. Um, I would not say I play any of them competently. Wait, Shannon, why do you play so many? That's amazing. So I did piano um, a bunch mm -hmm. as a kid because my parents are Chinese um, and then I didn't want to do piano anymore. They were like, okay, you can do flute. Um, so I did flute for a little bit, um, but I'm just like bad at music, I guess. Um, and then I did a uh, band like in school through um, middle school and high school. And so I did trumpet there and then I tried to quit. And the teacher was like, what about if instead of quitting, you did French horn? And I was like, okay, I guess. <laughs> so... Yep. Yeah, they do have that great opening to God Only Knows in French Horn. That's what I always think of. <laughs> Wait, but isn't French Horn much harder? Did that make you glad you didn't quit? No, I just felt guilty about quitting. Um, but I didn't, like, practice or anything, so... <laughs> I feel that. Uh, I, I have no musical skill. I, I, I had, like, piano and... Uh snare drum i think when i was younger in classes and stuff but i didn't ever do anything Wait, Joey, i got this thing i got this thing yeah. from richard or not from richard by richard's suggestion um so anyway that thing's fun i don't know what i'm doing but i press buttons and then i turn knobs and it makes cool sounds and then i don't do anything with them but it's fun um I don't really have any training in any instruments, except um, I can play like two songs on guitar 
and um, I um, fiddle around with the piano a lot. But um, I do uh, use a um, lot of um, instruments to make music and stuff. But I normally do it by like very slowly programming notes into a sequencer and then like having the notes play out, you know? Um, but yeah, I do music stuff and then I record it onto cassette tapes and then I don't let anybody listen to them. Mm. Richard, I was thinking about this yesterday. I think the instrument, another instrument option is a Wurlitzer. I don't really know what it is, but it sounds super cool. And that is a piano. high quality name. Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. Um, and I also started off with piano because I'm Chinese, probably, but also because I grew up in a small town. So I think my parents wanted to keep me out of trouble. So they gave me piano lessons that I had to practice one day, one hour every day for, but I didn't do that. I didn't practice enough. So I got really good at sight reading. So then I wouldn't have to <laughs> practice, but I could get better. And so music was like the thing to do in my town. So then I joined the band program. So I started off on clarinet, but there was too many clarinet players. And I was like, I don't want to be one of the 2000 clarinet players. So I switched to the bassoon, which was a bad idea because bassoons are very rare (laughs) and hard to find. And then, so I did bassoon in junior high and high school, but then everybody in the band has to also do the marching band. And so I didn't want to march the bassoon because I've heard, I don't know if this is true, but I've heard that if you march the bassoon, you could die because you might like trip and then your vocal will like pierce your skull through the back. So then instead of marching my bassoon, I played in the drum line. So I did the bass drums two years and then I did the tenor drums, which are like five drums. And then I did the snare drum my senior year. And then I did um, clarinet again for uh, pep band. And I did handbill choir uh, uh, just, just as like a fun choral activity. And then when I graduated high school, I didn't do any of these activities anymore. So I bought a ukulele. Now I have a ukulele. I think that's all my instruments. Are you, do you also have a piano right now? And I do have a piano right now. I was like, you know what? I'm going to innovate. And I'll, I got an electric piano with like that I could stand up so I could play piano while standing up because I did a lot of <laughs> classical music before. And I was like, this is the hot new way to play piano. <laughs> but um, I, I also really, I yeah, I want to get a banjo ukulele now too. Um, next question. Uh, what's your favorite slash easiest thing to draw in an arcade? Hardest? I think everyone knows my answer. Go, go, Richard. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> um, yeah, I like drawing mice. Um, I don't know why, but they come out looking nice. Um, it's like the one good thing that I'm, I'm I can consistently draw in, um, in um, pixel art. Everything else takes me a lot more time. That's nice. Oh, and then the hardest thing to draw is um let me think about that a bicycle um uh i need to think of things that i have to draw regularly that i always find really difficult i feel like the thing you always complain about is doing like tiles and tile maps but you always make it look really good but you're like oh i hate this but i'm like literature it looks great that is true though I think ground tiles. I'm bad at ground tiles. Mm. Um, the easiest thing for me to draw, I really like drawing people. And the hardest thing for me to draw is people with angry eyes because I have issues with like how the eyebrows go and you don't have like much real estate to work with. Shannon? Um, my favorite thing to draw is fish of all kinds. Um, and then I struggle with people and also with just things that are round in general i feel like i do a bad job of making like nice circles like you know wheels blobs mm-hmm. any of that sort of thing mm-hmm. I, I like corgis um, and I, I struggle with any sort of animal that i can't just add cute eyes to and make it look like a friend mm. this is a mouse of course it is <laughs> mm-hmm. Question. We also had a recommendation in chat that Richard become a rapper because you rhymed. I like mice with they look nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you were not here in the pre-stream. Richard was, you know. Just I, mean, I was. Um, I was freestyling a rap to open this stream with, um, but I couldn't get more than two lines. So, mm-hmm. gotta say I'm not terrible at freestyling, but I will probably never do it on this stream. Sorry. <laughs> 
Okay. And then, Richard, while you make the mice, we can answer this question from Agent 14. Um, can we add an exe app file option to download projects and play them as apps? This would be helpful when trying to make them look professional, and it would be cool. Thoughts? Um. Yeah, that's that's a great thing to file on um, GitHub. I can't say that we don't have any plans for that right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we have. I feel like people are encouraged by Richard's amazing uh, request for extension turnaround. So we have another one of these situations. Um, Omnis Imperium asks, if it is not too much trouble, can someone from the MakeCo team make a shop extension that will allow players to make a shop system for upgrades, weapons, etc. Hmm. That's... I mean, so I, I have worked on some extensions that might be helpful for this, um, namely the menu extension, which lets you um, um, just kind of give a menu to choose from. But um, you'd have to be a little more specific, I guess, in what you're looking for. Um, and uh, no promises. I usually do these in my free time. So, um, but if you if you give give a post with some more information, um, maybe one of us could um, at least point you in the right direction or show you a combination of extensions that already exist that would let you um, get that. Definitely check out the menu extension, which is at ricknoll slash arcade dash menu. I think so. I've been meaning to go in and kind of make it better. Um, it's kind of in an unfinished state right now, but a lot of people are using it. Um, Great. I have a question. What's a good way for somebody to like ask for a feature? Like, what do they need to detail? What are good details to add in to the thing? You know. Um, I just um, in this case, the reason I was asking was because there's a lot of different ways you can do a shop, mm -hmm. um, and you know, a, a lot of different games do it kind of you know differently. Mm -hmm. So it's it's kind of a question of of what they're imagining the shop would look like. You know. Mm -hmm. So like um, pictures. Well, I think pictures are good. I think pointing to games that we've probably played are good or, or games that, you know, um, you like the, the implementation of. Um, we, you know, between all of us, I think we've played a lot of video games. So, house. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, otherwise, in general, for feature requests, good things would be, like, things that you have tried that you didn't find it in, because maybe it's a feature we have, but it's not something you've noticed or you... We didn't make it obvious enough that people can find it. Um, other things would be like why you want that feature is useful because like maybe there's another path to lead to the same thing or maybe it's just something that we didn't think of and it gives us a new thing to think about in the future. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Also, we have another feature request, but also kind kind of talking about the debugger from Cosmos Cowboy, which is um, all of this. Right, almost all of the sprite properties that you can set are visible in the debugger. However, there are a few properties that are missing that I would find very useful in the debugger, namely top, bottom, left, and right. And they would like to see these added to the debugger. But Richard, do you want to show off the debugger in general? Since I don't know if we use it too much on stream. Yeah, we use it sometimes on stream, usually when there's an error. But you can use it, you know, a lot of the time to figure out how stuff is, you know, working in your program. Um, so if you go over here and click this bug that's under the simulator. Um, you'll get into debugger mode. Um, there's a few things that have changed here. We now have these little circles on all of the blocks. These are called breakpoints. And the idea is if I click one of these, it will um, turn red and the um, uh, program will stop when it gets to that breakpoint. So when it stopped, um, you can see the simulator is not running anymore. Um, we can see our variables in their current state. Um, and if I expand one of these guys, you can see um, all of their properties. So X, Y, V, X, V, I, A, X, A, Y, F, X, F, Y, you know, so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, I mean, file this on, on um, GitHub and we can um, talk about what, what properties to surface. I will say there are a lot of properties on sprites and we don't want to make it so that they like completely, you know, um, it just like takes up the entire toolbox whenever you expand one of them. Um, that being said, seeing as how we, you know, only have X, Y, I, I think the position ones might be reasonable, but we'll have to talk with the rest of the team and see what they say. We might be able to think about something in the future, like making it so it's a scrollable section, because this is already a very large and on smaller devices might take up the entire screen already anyway. Yeah. Um, some other cool things about the debugger real quick. Um, you can step, so um, step to the next part of your program. Um, 
which is nice, lets you kind of trace how the execution is going. Um, and you can also turn on snail mode, um, which will highlight the blocks as they execute and will also make your game run much slower. So just FYI, um, it's a nice way to see how things are working, but on a big games, it's not as useful because like I said, it does slow down your game a bit. Snail mode is, I would say, one of our most underrated features, so um, it's, it's very cool. It's pretty great. Useful. Yeah. I forget, does it update the uh, variables in real time when it's in snow? Like, at does, each breakpoint? Yes. It does, okay. You know, you can look at variables. I, I don't think you can expand sprites, though. Yeah. But you can um, see numbers and things update. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, we have a question from LC Pro Coder, which is how to get a grayscale palette. Grayscale is hip right now, very in. So, you know, we want to be able to bring that into our games. Yeah, um, I'm not going to go through the whole thing kind of in this stream just because um, it's, it's got a lot of steps. But um, there's a way to edit your project so that you can have a grayscale palette. I mean, it will show up in the sprite editor. That's kind of the, the fancy way to do it. And it's also the dangerous way to do it because you can end up breaking your project. So you should only ever do it on a blank project, a new project that you haven't put any code yet. Just in case you make a mistake, you won't lose all of your work. Um, we do have another extension which um, can do something kind of similar to this. Um, the, uh, color, the, the color, color, right uh, color fading. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this was written by Joey. Um, and you can do um, a lot of different things in here. Um, one, like this, um, this, this block right here, set color palette to original. I could change this to set color palette to grayscale. And now you can see we're in grayscale. Um, uh, it would be nice if, you know, if I, as I was doing this, I could, you know, actually control which colors are getting mapped to which. Um, and that's why it's sometimes nice to edit the pxd.json. So you can see it in the sprite editor. Um, Right now, you know, I just kind of end up with whatever the color mapping has, happens to be. Um, but this is definitely the safer and easier way to do it. And you can even, you know, swap to other ones. What is DIY? I, I did the usable, the palettes that were openly licensed on, uh, I forget what the website is. I linked it on the GitHub extension itself. Uh, the color palette website that gives away a bunch of these. So I just kept the names when they were available. Can, what do you mean gives away? It's just a list of colors, right? Nobody. Well, can. yeah. I mean, it, it gives away as in it's like a pretty website. It's oh, like sure. This. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, next question um, is: Is there any way that they can make their games online multiplayer? Uh, so one person can generate the code, and that other players can join and enter, and then the two players can be in different countries too. Um, Joey. Sure. I mean, we can answer that one, I guess. Um, we did a little, uh, every year we have a hackathon at Microsoft where we just make cool stuff and it's just kind of fun. It's not something that necessarily turns into products or ever becomes an actual feature. It's mainly just there for like, there's this thing that I think would be cool and we should try it and see how much work it is there. And like, we can scope out how much work it is to add to an actual product. That's kind of a more broad sense a lot of the time. Um, so we did a little thing like that where we used, uh, did that. Um, I don't think it necessarily works right now, and it definitely won't work after the next update unless we update it. Um, so it's not available, but it's something we can uh, eventually think about adding proper support for, but it's not really mm. broadly supported. Yeah. Right now. I think the, the, the best answer for this is it's something that we talk about a lot and that mm -hmm. we're, you know, we think would be pretty cool, but um, we don't have any um, timeline or anything for it right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, also, another question about colors. Is it possible to have more than 16 colors in the sprite editor? If yes, then how to do it? No, it is not. Easy. Um, is it possible to change the font of Arcade text extension? Right now, there's only a pixely kind of font. Is there any way that they can make the font Times New Roman or any other font? Um, it'll always be a pixely font. There is a way to do more fonts, but it's pretty involved, um, and I wouldn't recommend it. Um, maybe we'll publish a guide on how to do that at some point. But um, uh, these two, the fonts that we include were, were just kind of either ones we already had or ones we had um, permission to use. Um, but uh, the resolution of the screen is always going to be 160 by 120. So um, they're not going to get any smoother. 
I would say a great thing for an extension would be like big text with like different shapes. You probably can't use like uh, like actual Times New Roman or that sort of thing. But um, if someone wanted to make like a bunch of letters that would um, come up on screen with like different colors, I feel like that would be a fun thing. I forget, did we ever do the emoji thing? We were <laughs> oh no, I already forgot about that. Um, yeah, maybe I'll, um, I'll, I'll, if I have some time, maybe I'll post a guide on how to do a font, but it's pretty difficult. Um, so I don't know how useful it'll be, but maybe some enterprising extension writer will go ahead and, um, make a, a font with some, some cool, um, options. Just putting the energy out there for <laughs> But yeah, it, it still will always look pixely just because that's how many pixels we have. That's what we were saying, right? We have only 160 wide. There's not that. Uh, Times New Roman is very detailed compared to that. Yep. This leads perfectly into the next question, which is, um, is there any way to make extensions with Python? Because currently you can make extensions with TypeScript, TypeScript slash JavaScript, um, but they're not very familiar with either. And they they would like they have more experience with Python and want to know if that's something that they could do. Um, I think the the answer to that is not really. Um, you're going to need to write TypeScript in order to have the extension work in our um, in our editor. Um, it's something that we've talked about internally or tried to figure out a workaround for, but I would say right now it's not possible. A thing you could do is write your code in Python, like write functions, um, and then you like run that function and make sure it does what you want on the screen, and then you convert it to TypeScript um, and try to export that. But um, that is, yeah, true. You might have to do some steps, like putting it in a namespace and stuff. But thank you. Can we pull up the documentation for like writing, or like we do have documentation for how to write extensions with TypeScript? So like. There's something you won't have to start from zero, and it's, it's nice. Um, yeah, so if you go to minkocom slash docs, um, we have some information about how to um, do these things. We'll say that these are mostly written for experienced programming, um, uh, people who are experienced with programming. But um, uh, there is a creating extension section, which gives you some um, information on how to make an ex uh, extension using GitHub and, you know, um, export blocks and all the different options you have. So um, that's makecode.com slash extensions or makecode.com slash docs just to get all of our kind of developer documentation. There's also the playground, uh, which is good for just if you want to look through and find some blocks that do what you want and just copy and paste the slash slash percent portion to you, whatever you're doing. That yeah. is so the easiest this is, way. Um, makecode.com slash playground, like Joey mentioned. Um, it has examples for a bunch of different types of blocks. So, you know, I can do like um, turn ratio. Um, and if I click this run button, um, my uh, block that's defined right here will show up over here. And you can even make changes. Like right now, this says steer, and I could change it to uh, drive in the direction in the field. Beautiful. It might um, not. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there is a there is a there's some bug right now where if you change the ID, yeah. maybe it will. Um. Yeah. Oh, changing the site probably worked. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. This tool can be a little buggy, but um, <laughs> there you go. Um. And you know, if I click here, I get a turn ratio, which is nice. Hooray. Um. Cool. Um. Next question is that they have a side scrolling game and they want to place certain sprites to the right outside of the screen. Is there any limit to how far you can place the sprites outside of the screen? No, you can place sprites wherever you want. Um, if you're in a tile map, then the edges of the map will be made walls. So if you want to place something that's outside of the screen, you can do it, but there might be some side effects like um, if the uh, sprite goes outside of the screen and um, into a wall, it'll start, you know, clipping through walls until it's back fully in a space that doesn't have walls. Um, I'm not really sure how to explain that any clearer, but the idea is um, be a little careful when you're doing it with tile maps, but you can put them wherever you want um, and they can move when they're on the outside. If you're having problems right now where they're getting destroyed or um, 
you know, things along those lines, then you might want to check what flags are turned on on your sprites. So um, we have a few flags here um, that are uh, have to do with this, um, namely the auto destroy and destroy on wall. So uh, if you have auto destroy turned on, then anytime a sprite goes outside the screen, it will get destroyed automatically. Um, with destroy on a wall, anytime a sprite touches a wall, it'll get destroyed automatically. So um, projectiles by default have both of these turned on. And um, yep, you want to make sure that um, if you're seeing the sprite just disappear and you can't get it back, you know, try turning these off and see if that fixes your problem. Nice. Um, Richard, are you ready for like a coding coding question? Not a test. Sure. OK, so um, Martin Foxy is currently working on a space shooter with a tutorial help and wants to know if there's any way to stop um, enemies spawning at score 120 and then spawn one big enemy with a bigger HP as a boss. OK, well, um, the way we would do that and the way you know these, these games are typically uh, kind of written is we'll have something like um, an on-game update, which is spawning enemies. So let's go ahead and write that right now real quick. Um, we'll use projectiles for our enemies. Um, what's the enemy of a mouse? A cat. box with a little stick propped up and a piece of cheese under it. It's true. Maybe a tall chair. <laughs> I feel like squirrels could be enemies of mice also. Oh yeah, like they're the same genre and maybe like squirrels are trying to, you know, be more popular and the mice are like, no. Nice. <laughs> mm. All right, we're just going to go with a pink nose. Give it a tail. It's a cat. All right. Um, so let's change the background color so that we can actually see these guys. Um, and we're also going to um, uh, use the projectile from wall so that um, they're not coming from our mouse. That's cruel. I'm into this DIY color palette. It's very like, I don't know, yeah. 70s, 90s? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm having a lot of fun with it, though. I like how it looks. <laughs> um, all right. So we're going to set this um, VY to be 0, VX to be negative 50, so that we have a bunch of cats going. And we're going to give them, you know, just like a random Y. This is like the intro sequence for Totoro. It is kind of like that. <laughs> I feel like this means Richard has natu natural energy, you know, to be able to work at a big animation. Nice. And we're going to um, also move our um, mouse with buttons. Nice. OK. So um, we want to make it so that when our score gets to a certain point, we're going to stop spawning these guys and spawn one big um, enemy. So um, to do that, we're going to use an if statement. And I'm going to put this right here. Um, and uh, we're going to, first, I guess we need to set our score. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm just going to do an on destroyed for um, projectile. And when that happens, I'm going to change our score. Um, and I'm going to say that once, um, our, sorry, change our score by one. And we're going to stop spawning once our score is five. So I'm going to get a comparison block here and check our score. And we're saying if our score is less than five, then we're going to make these cats. So let's watch this play out. Got cats coming. Score is ticking up now. It's to five. No more cats. Right. The ones that were already there kept going, but you know, no more are coming. All right, so that's great. Um, we also need to um, spawn our boss, though. So um, to do that, let's go ahead and create another sprite, which um, is going to be um, you know, a really big um, sprite. And this is going to be based off the um, cat in the Great Mouse Detective, which I was watching yesterday, <laughs> um, which had its fur going up like that. And it's got a bow. 
believe its name was Felicia. I feel like this is also one of the aristocrats. Yes, but it had white fur, right? Yes. yes. Angry eyes. We're going quickly, guys. <laughs> we're going quickly, but we're not sacrificing quality, obviously. Absolutely not. <laughs> No, this boss looks very villainous. <laughs> All right, so we're going to rename this to be Boss. And we want to spawn them um, once we get to this point where the score is less than five. So um, I'm actually going to do that in the same little if statement. And um, uh, you might be tempted to just do this on an else. But this is going to make it so that every 500 milliseconds we're spawning another boss, which is not what we want. Um, so we're going to be using a variable to check to see if the boss exists. Um, Davix LP in the chat asks if the cat in that movie isn't a cat, but actually a raccoon in disguise. No, it's a cat. Um, I think you're just looking at the image wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you wanted, you were using your eyes, but really you wanted to use your heart. I clearly yeah. drew a cat here. Clearly. I'm give it a longer tail, maybe. But that's it. And that cat has good hair. Gosh, I love putting this thing through the color palette roulette. <laughs> um, all right, so we're going to set this boss exists to be true when we create our boss. Um, and we're also going to expand this so that we um, have a, uh, um, an extra else if. Um, and we're going to check to see if our boss does not exist yet. So let's go ahead and put that there. And we'll put our not boss exists. There you go. <laughs> Terrifying. <laughs> All right, so um, we've got our cat now, but let's say we want to make um, our cat do something. So it's not just, you know, existing. Well, we can actually, you know, use this um, if statement to um, uh, uh, add some behavior. So if score is less than five, we're going to be doing this. Otherwise, we're going to create this boss if the boss doesn't exist. And if the boss does exist, then the code we put in here will run. So let's go ahead and um, take our uh, um, our boss and maybe give them a random velocity. This is terrifying. Cannot we'll predict from, this cat. Yeah. Cats are like that. We never know what they're thinking. <laughs> I think the boss should bounce. Oh, for sure. Boss. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> right. And you could you could do something a little more clever. But um, like Shannon mentioned, we want to make sure this boss, you know, stays in the screen. So um, one way to do that would be we can make it so that this is a tile map and there's walls on the outside and the boss bounces. Another way is just to go into sprites and set the um, stay in screen. Uh, Bounce on walls works on the screen, if I remember right, when the tile map is not set. Oh, cool. All right, so um, I'll go ahead and say boss stay in screen to be on, and I'll say boss bounce on walls um, also to be on. <laughs> this deranged movement is just so scary. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Do you have any more questions? Do next? Oh, I do have more questions. Are you ready? Yeah, sure. Okay. Or do you um, think I covered this? Do you think there's anything else I want to do? No, I think this is great. I think a uh, bigger HP, I think, can just be dealt with um, with 
status bars? Yeah, so um, one way to do that would be to give the, the cat a status bar. Um, and then you could, you know, tick down the health, and when it's a zero, you know, um, destroy it or use the sprite data and just keep track of the health. You know, there's a few different options. We do a lot of these things kind of on stream. Mm -hmm. um, okay, we have another game-related question, which is, what is your favorite game? It does not have to be made in Make Code Arcade. Um, Joey, Richard, Shannon, me. This is the order. <laughs> Go, Joey. You said just favorite game in general? Yeah, good luck. Oh, this is even harder than like they were old. Uh, I'm just gonna go with Sunshine. Well, Mario Sunshine again. That was like that's a good game. Richard, it's pretty tough. Um, can we come back to me? Okay, Shannon. Um, my favorite game is probably Kentucky Route Zero. <laughs> Wait, I don't know what that is. Um, it's like a uh, it's point and click kind of. Um, it's like a I don't know indie narrative game about like um the american dream <laughs> but it's, it's very very well designed i think um i think it's well written and um just the like i don't know all, all the it's very polished like the sound design the writing um the visuals the game devs took a lot from like stagecraft um, when they're designing each you know scene that you're in um so that's very cool um, it's it's a magical realism story set in Kentucky about a uh, highway called the Zero. Um, that, yeah. <laughs> my favorite game, my, I, I don't know. I, I've been playing a lot of Stardew Valley recently with my friend, and I feel like there's so much to do in it, so I've really been enjoying it. <laughs> and our cow is cute. All right, I've got three answers. If we're talking about the game that I've spent the most time playing and like the most as a kid, it's probably Pokemon Leaf Green. If we're talking about the game that I probably like the most from just like thinking about and, you know, that I really enjoyed playing, but I haven't played a million times, it would be Earthbound. And if we're talking about the game that I most want to play every single time I think about it, it would probably be Breath of the Wild. Mm. Yes, I've also been playing a lot of Breath of the Wild <laughs> Um, okay, next question. What is your favorite collection of blocks? Okay. Uh, like your, your favorite, like, let's, let's say like your top three blocks. Oh, oh geez. Uh, I like the color palette one just because it does stuff like this where it just does random stuff. That's my favorite one desire. Uh, uh, the shake, the shake. The one that I never use. The the the. Can you pull up the sprites category so we can point it out? Because I, or is it Bottom, screen? Yeah. yeah, there we go. Um, the one that I always forget about, where it shakes the screen, screen shake that it thing. Is. Yeah, uh, we never use it, but it's kind of cool, and it, it does something you can't do any other way. Um, yeah, two's good for me. <laughs> <laughs> Coupled with the animation. <laughs> um, okay, my favorite would be, um, I actually really like the forever block. Um, we usually use on game update, but forever, whenever I remember that it's like, oh, it's perfect for this situation, you know, it's very helpful. Um, so I would go with forever. Um, the next one would be the animate, because, you know, I love it. I love turning on loop. Um, and then my third one would probably be um, Replace Color, which is a great block. Mm. Um, my number one favorite block is set like Sprite X2 because you can drop it down in secretly many blocks in one. <laughs> so I feel like, you know, best bang for your block. Or, yeah, yeah. best bang for your block. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> I also really like the follow block because I feel like it saved us in many occasion from doing math, especially this week. Um, and I also like the overlaps one. It's good to know what things are interacting with what. And okay, another question. If you could not use the name Make Good Arcade, what Wait, would did you- Wait, did Shannon go? Oh. Um, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> did you not go? No, I don't think so. Oh, sorry. You said animation. Sorry. Go. <laughs> um, okay. Favorite block is um, swap color. 
and then um, pick random, I think. Um, I think any game could be improved by putting pick randoms where you have other numbers. Um, and uh, I also like the on sprite create and on sprite destroyed ones. Um, I feel like we've gotten um, lots of like, I don't know, cool solutions to difficult problems from them. Sorry, Shannon. It's cool. Okay. <laughs> Next question. If we could not use the name Make Code Arcade, what would you call it? I will go first. I would call it Make Cake. Okay, I came up with this before stream. Okay. Yes, um, uh, Vivian was watching me draw out this make code help desk. And as I wrote make and then a C, she was like, make cake, make cake, make cake. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, Richard, don't think about it. Go with your gut. What would you call it? Oh, so um, I was here when we named make code arcade um, and it took a lot of um, it was a very heated debate. We ate a pizza and we all sat around a table and we had a whiteboard and we came up with a bunch of different ideas. Um, but I always liked the idea of naming it something like a really old retro console. So something like the, you know, the Make Code 1000 or something like that. Um, you know, PXT really 32, liked, like it was first. And I did not like PXT 32, but that was the um, original code name for it. Um, yeah, so something along those lines. I really like the console ColecoVision, so something like that. ColecoVision is such a good name. Joey? Oh. Oh, no. Uh... These questions have been up for weeks. You had <laughs> yeah, I mean, time. They have. I, I, I did have time. I don't <laughs> know. Um... Uh, wait, so it's, it's still make code, or is it like an entire like? Are we supposed anything. to be still using make code? I think you can have anything, Joey. What would your heart oh. want? We uh, make code cool game platform. Very honest. To the point. <laughs> <laughs> Cover this, Shannon. Oh, I actually, I think. Uh, <laughs> Richard was telling us about some of the other options, um, and I did like the one that was like MKCD32 um, or something, like all caps, uh, just sort of an incomprehensible sequence of like yeah. two to four letters, and then some numbers. I liked <laughs> MKCD32 much more than PXD32. I especially <laughs> like MKCD3000, like I think was one of them. Yeah, I was into yeah. that. <laughs> Wait, what 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 does three thousand have to it's just a cool sounding number? It's a big it's a number. number. It's just a good number. It's high. Okay. <laughs> it's like twenty XX or thirty XX. Fair, fair. And then we have the last question, which I feel like we can probably answer easily from also Mr. HM, which is who is the target user slash market for arcade? Is there one? Um I mean I, I would rather Maybe we ask that oh. question on the make code stream. Jacqueline okay. and um, Lizzie oh, okay. give a much better explanation than we could. Oh yeah, the make code show is next Thursday, so you guys should watch it. It'll be awesome. And yeah, I'll be there. You'll see different faces, but also Richard. <laughs> One same face. <laughs> yeah. Um, what time is that? Twelve thirty PST, right? I think so. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I always use PT because I don't trust the PST or PDT or anything. Okay. It always changes. 12, 12 noon, oh, 1230 if you're on like the west part of the US. Right before this stream. Let's just say it's right a half before hour before the stream. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good call. Good call. <laughs> okay. So thank, I, that's all the questions. So thanks everybody for joining and submitting your questions. Um, I'll post up another thread on the forum. So if you saw this and you're like, man, I wish I asked this question because then I could have heard all the interesting answers. Don't <laughs> worry, you need not live in regret. There is still time. So um, my name is Vivian. I'm at Live Cheerful on the Make Code Forums. I'm Joey at Jay Wonder on the Make Code Forums. Oh, I'm Richard at Richard on the Make Code Forums. I'm Shannon at Chacal on the Make Code Forums. Uh, okay, we today's Friday, so we won't see you until Monday. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.